Welcome back to General Chemistry mini lecture series, lecture 15. Relationship between amount of element and compound. So previously we already learned how to interconvert from the mass of a substance to the particle of the same substance or vice versa. Today we are actually going to focus on how to convert a quantity of one substance to the quantity of another substance. For example, we can consider A here as a carbon, B here as a carbon dioxide. Carbon as A and then carbon dioxide as B. So how do we perform the conversion of quantity between the two, we use subscripts in the chemical formula. For example, one mole of CO2 gives two moles of oxygen, but one mole of CO2 only gives one mole of carbon. So we use a subscript as the conversion vector. Uh, the coefficients, that's what we are going to talk about later in stoichiometry. In stoichiometry, we'll use the coefficients of a balanced chemical equation as the conversion factors. Now let's work on one example. How many moles of hydrogen atoms are in 0 0.5 moles of water? You see we are converting from the moles of water, we can consider water as A, and then to the moles of hydrogen atoms, we can consider hydrogen atom as B. Now we start from what we know, number of moles for water, that's given 0 0.5 moles, multiplied by the conversion factor, we are converting from moles of water to moles of hydrogen atoms. And in the conversion factor, we are going to use the subscripts. One mole of water gives two moles of hydrogen atoms. The moles of water, you see the unit there, they are canceled. And now the answer is one mole of hydrogen atoms. So 0 0.5 moles of water molecules gives one mole of hydrogen atoms. Another example, how many grams of oxygen atoms are in 0 0.75 moles of sulfuric acid? Sulfuric acid we start from there, we have 0 0.75 moles of sulfuric acid. Because we are going to find out the grams of oxygen atoms, so therefore first we need to convert from the moles of sulfuric acid to the moles of oxygen atoms. So 1 to 4, and the 4 is a subscript for oxygen atoms. Now you see uh, most of sulfuric acid that can be cancelled. We further need to convert from moles of oxygen, put that on bottom, to grams of oxygen. And now of course we can cancel the moles of oxygen and then that should give us 48 grams of oxygen atoms. Another example, how many hydrogen atoms are in 10 ammonia molecules? We start from 10 ammonia molecules and we need to convert from ammonia molecules to hydrogen atoms one ammonia molecule contains three hydrogen atoms. 
ammonia molecules, ammonia molecules, they are canceled. And then we have 30 hydrogen atoms. So 10 ammonia molecules gives us 30 hydrogen atoms. Another one. How many grams of nitrogen atoms are in 126 grams of nitric acid? Now assume A is nitric acid and B is nitrogen. What do we know? We know grams of nitric acid. So we need to convert that to moles of nitric acid. And then from moles of nitric acid to moles of nitrogen atoms, then from moles of nitrogen atoms to grams of nitrogen atoms. So that's the strategy. Okay, start from 126 grams of nitric acid, convert that to the moles of nitric acid using the molar mass of nitric acid. Now convert from the moles of nitric acid to the moles of nitrogen atoms. That's one to one ratio because in the subscript we see for nitrogen in the chemical formula is one. Then the last step, we are going to convert from moles of nitrogen to grams of nitrogen using the molar mass. And that should give us 28 grams of nitrogen atoms. Now let's take a look what kind of information can we obtain from a chemical formula. So we use a sodium phosphate as an example. So the first column is a different quantities and the next three columns, so there are simply the three elements in this compound. First, let's take a look at the number of items in each formula unit. So for sodium, since we have the subscript of three, so therefore we should have three sodium atoms. Phosphorus, one item, oxygen, four items. Next, the total mass of each element in one formula unit. So then we use AMU as the unit of mass. So since we have a three sodium atoms, then three times sodium's atomic mass, that gives us 68.97 AMU. Phosphorus, only one item, 30.97 AMU, that happened to be just the atomic mass for phosphorus. Oxygen, four times oxygen's atomic mass, 64 AMU. Moles of atoms in each mole of compound. For sodium, that should be three moles for every one mole of sodium phosphate, again because of the subscript for sodium. Phosphorus, one mole, oxygen, four moles. Now the number of items in each mole of sodium phosphate compound we know the number of atoms or number of particles that's related to the number of moles. Since there are three moles of a sodium atoms in one mole of a sodium phosphate, so therefore that should be three Avogadro number sodium atoms. One Avogadro number phosphorus atoms, and then four Avogadro number oxygen atoms. Now the total mass of each element in grams in one mole of compound. There are three moles of sodium in one mole of sodium phosphate. Three times the molar mass of sodium, then that should give us 68.97 grams phosphorus, 30.97 grams oxygen, 64 grams. Okay, let's take a look at the first quiz here. How many moles of oxygen atoms are in 1.5 moles of ozone? So first you need to know the chemical formula for ozone. That should be O3. So now we know the moles of 
O3 molecule, we just need to find out the number of moles of oxygen atoms. We start with 1.5 moles of O3. We are converting from moles of O3 to moles of oxygen atoms and in one mole of O3 we have three moles of oxygen atoms because of this subscript. So the volume should be three here. And of course three times 1.5 that should be 4.5 moles of oxygen items. So therefore the correct answer should be C. You can work on the remaining few questions and of course many more from the homework assignment. So this is lecture 15 and I will see you guys in lecture 16.